Welcome everybody from Paris. Just a few hours earlier, we were standing under the Wellington Arch in London, and now we're under the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. Little did we know when we arrived in the afternoon that it was going to be a very long day, but a very special one, and it was a great way to kick off our time in France. We're sleeping. Woo! It's 119, dude. 130 in the morning. So stay tuned, and we're going to tell you why we're in the Paris Metro at 1.30 a.m., why the Eiffel Tower is all lit up, and what to expect if you're in Paris on July 14th, Bastille Day. We made it. Earlier in the day, we checked into our accommodation, the Hotel Montfleury. Be sure to check out our full review and video on this hotel. We didn't want to waste any daylight, and we wanted to head down and show the kids the Eiffel Tower, so we jumped on the metro and made our way there. Let's party! Alright, welcome to Bastille Day in France! When we arrived in Paris, we just so happened to learn that it was Bastille Day, July 14th, the largest national holiday in France. All right, there are so many people on our subway, our metro, that he did not stop at our Eiffel Tower stop. So now we've got to walk a couple blocks to the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. Remember, down with the Bastille, whatever. So we were pretty excited to be here. The streets were just overflowing with people. The bars and restaurants were crowded and everyone was just out having a great time celebrating this holiday, which is a symbol for the French Revolution. In Paris, and it is Bastille Day, so there's a lot of festivals. We are heading to the Eiffel Tower right now to go watch the fireworks. And we've got a couple walks, block, and we've got a couple blocks to walk. So let's enjoy the evening. So we're still several blocks away from the Eiffel Tower, and as we got closer, the crowd started to get more dense. And now we're starting to realize that this might be a little bit of a challenge. Just trying to get to the Eiffel Tower. We finally catch a glimpse of the Eiffel Tower, but we're still a few blocks away, and now we're starting to literally walk over people that are camped out on the ground. So right now it is the evening. Fireworks start at the Eiffel Tower here in about an hour. It is Bastille Day. Never seen it like this. I've only been to Paris twice, but all the roads are closed right now. Everyone is just hanging out, trying to get a spot to watch the fireworks. And thousands of people are trying to make it to the Eiffel Tower. As we got closer to the Eiffel Tower, it became more and more difficult to navigate the crowd. And at times, we were having trouble actually staying together. Literally hundreds of thousands of people were in the streets of Paris. And we quickly came to a realization. All right, so not gonna happen. It is Bastille Day. We tried to get to the Eiffel Tower and there are literally thousands and thousands of people that we could not walk anymore. We got like two blocks yeah, away. I so, I, I mean, it was it. wall to wall people. And so we said, forget that. Now we're walking a little bit away from the Eiffel Tower to try and sneak a peek at it somewhere else and we can actually breathe. But man, there were so many people, like we couldn't even get through and we almost got separated yeah. a couple of times. I so, I know, I almost fell on somebody. I know, I fell on somebody. But uh, it's Bastille Day, we had no idea what to expect, but it is nuts down by the mm -hmm. Eiffel Tower. So we're just kind of kind of find some space, find mm -hmm. a cafe to get some food. My, so basically, here's you, my suggestion on Bastille Day. Uh, if you're a loner, yes, try to get by the Eiffel Tower. You don't have people to be with, so separation won't really yeah. matter. That's a great idea. But if you're with a group, highly suggest not going to the Eiffel Tower and finding another area to find and watch the fireworks. Because then you're going to get trapped in the groups and get separated. And like Ooh. maybe make a reservation somewhere, or somewhere yeah. beforehand so you can actually see it while you eat and sit down. And they've got all the streets blocked off and barricaded. Like check this out. I don't even know if we can get through here. No, we can't. No, Parker, you can't. Another thing is, yeah, you can over here. 
So another thing is our friends actually have a place here on a balcony and they invited us to go and watch this with them. And um, we should have taken them up on the offer. <laughs> yes, definitely pre-plan a place to settle in and watch ahead of time if you can. So here's where we ended up. All right, so it's our first night and there are so many people down here. So we ended up going to a little grocery store grabbing snacks, and now we are sitting on the street. But there's the Eiffel Tower. And, and here's how fancy we are. We got a bottle of wine, snacks. Let's see your wine glass, Brooke. There it is. But it's still awesome because this is our first night in Paris and the weather's great and we're about to watch fireworks at the Eiffel Tower. Matt, are you having fun yet? This is awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> Drinking wine out of a paper cup on the streets of Paris. Cheers. With the Eiffel Tower. We're waiting for it. On Bastille Day. On Bastille Day. It's changing colors. Oh, oh. As you can see, even the side streets are crowded with people, but everyone is out and having a great time. Everyone is socializing, drinking, and enjoying the evening weather. And in Paris, a lot of the side streets have a great view of the Eiffel Tower as well. And although for us, this all kind of caught us off guard and it was kind of crazy getting up to this point, we were having such a great time enjoying our first evening in Paris. And this is just some of the adventure and unpredictability that goes along with travel. And sometimes you just have to be flexible and roll with it. Now it's finally time for some fireworks. So randomly arriving in Paris on Bastille Day, Eiffel Tower fireworks, hanging out in the streets of Paris with everyone was such an amazing experience and we're glad we stumbled upon it. But now it's approaching midnight and it's time for us to head back to our hotel, which is a feat in itself and becomes a whole nother adventure. All right, we did this in Rome and now we're in Paris on scooters trying to get back to our hotel. We just crossed the River Seine on scooters. Brooke and Kenzie are on one, Parker's on one, and I am on one. So here we go. How you doing, Parker? Our options for getting back to our hotel became limited. The metro was just so crowded we didn't even attempt it, and it was impossible to get an Uber. So just like in Rome, we found these Lime scooters and had to hop on. The streets were just crazy and crowded, a lot of streets were still blocked off, and it was just a long way to walk. So we rode the scooters away from the heart of the crowd until we could find a less crowded metro stop. And eventually we made it back to the metro stop near our hotel. It was a super long day, but it was an experience that we will always remember. We are all really tired and worn out and pretty much running on adrenaline. We're sleeping. Woo! It's 119, dude. 130 in the morning, Bastille Day. I'm sleeping in. I'm sleeping in. It took us like an hour and a half to get home. We walked, rode Lime scooters. Wow walked again and then finally rode the metro and we're back on the Shans Alizée near our hotel and we can see the Arc de Triomphe yes and you can see yeah. how much traffic is on the street but there are so many people out tonight it's almost two in the morning I don't recommend staying up till two in the morning guys yeah you saw our video about riding the uh, lime scooters through the streets of Rome well, we rode them through the streets of Paris tonight in like massive traffic. And then Kenzie was like, we we're crossing the Seine River and Kenzie said, take a picture of the Eiffel Tower because it was beautiful. So I did. 
And then some lady called me an effing tourist. You were pretty much an effing tourist. But I got a great picture. You know what? And it was nuts. Everybody was riding scooters. There's crazy traffic. People were walking, riding. And then, and then Matt decides to stop in the middle of it all and take a picture. <laughs> well, I had to take a picture of the Eiffel Tower over the Seine, a river Seine. But you don't do it in the bike lane. <laughs> Yeah, Dad, what were you thinking? I don't know. Like, I wasn't stopping traffic. Anyway. anyway I wouldn't let them. I think we did uh, our first night in Paris uh, as best as we could. Absolutely. We fit a lot in today. I mean, and, we started like, out with Buckingham Palace and ended it with... Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're a good point. We're at Buckingham Palace yeah. this morning, and then we ended it at the yeah. Eiffel Tower tonight. <laughs> Well, that pretty much wraps up this episode. Hope this gave you a little insight on what it's like to be in Paris on July 14th, but still day. If you've been there as well on that same holiday, please let us know how your experience was in the comments below. It was a long and crowded day, but it's definitely an experience we'll all remember. So stay tuned for more episodes in our Paris series coming up. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and look out for more American Travel Family Adventures. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more American Travel Family Adventures! Bienvenue à Paris! When did you learn to speak French?